Let Tsitsi fly. The Tsitsi fly is a monster. At up to 15 millimeters long, this is the heavyweight of insect vampires. This bloodsucker can track you down like a heat-seeking missile. And it's a voracious feeder. Bruce Helm, from Phoenix, Arizona, was on the vacation of a lifetime. He was in Kenya when he got his blood sucked by a tsetse fly. I had a spot on my chin that was starting to get about the size of a quarter. Uh, I had one on my shoulder, uh, just below the shoulder blade, that got to be about the size of a quarter. It was red and uh, starting to spread out. No idea what it was, but uh, at this time I was really, really feeling nasty and under the weather. Tsetse flies don't just suck your blood. They can leave a tiny package of parasites in their wake. Tiny, but deadly. Bruce was so ill that he and his wife decided to fly home right away. Bruce had no idea that millions of parasites were raging around his body, annihilating cells and leaving a trail of destruction behind them. I got a call from the emergency room about 3 in the morning, and uh, they explained to me that a fellow had come in off the airplane from Africa. Bruce had skin lesions, a dangerously high temperature, and a severe headache. Mr. Helm saw me about six days after being bitten by the tsetse flies. He already had the lumps where the organisms were multiplying. They were already in his blood. They'd actually already reached his brain by that time, so very quick. Most of the time, the entire illness from injection by the fly to death might even be a month. Bruce faced a tough choice. The only available medication was so toxic that the FDA wouldn't approve it. Melarsoprol is arsenic-based and powerful enough to dissolve plastic. Is it burning? A little bit. Okay. The medicine itself can kill you. Okay, we're almost done. Okay. But sleeping sickness, if untreated, kills 100% of victims. Bruce Helm received the Melarsoprol for the infection with trypanosomes, and what it did, it damaged his nerves. It's permanent. Uh, it may never go away, but he's alive. Three years later, Bruce still can't wear blue jeans. They are too painful against his raw nerve endings. His hands and feet are constantly numb and heavy. But he's back playing golf and feels lucky to be alive. Just really glad to be here. I mean, it's uh, love and life. Look at it a whole lot different in reality. I mean, it, uh, no longer handshakes. We hug each other because I'm tickled to be here. <laughs>